December 26, 2014's weekly wrap-up. Merry after Christmas one day. I hope you had a great Christmas, everybody. And uh, next week, New Year's Eve, right? In 2015, here we are. I said it at the beginning of the year. Before we knew it, we'd be saying Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and eating turkey. And it seems like we've done everything but say Happy New Year so far. So that's coming pretty quick. As far as what's been going on around here, uh, another release of uh, Nate Pruitt's Rick Vanderveer's uh, material. There's so much information in this song. You know, uh, there are a lot of songs. There's going to be a whole series of Nate Pruitt songs, as well as some other artists that will be showing up pretty soon here. Uh, but I think we'll wrap up this year with, uh, with Nate's stuff here. And if you've been following along, just learning from this one song as I go through it and analyze different parts that Nate has brought into it, there's so much information. And you know what? We haven't covered it all yet. And what I mean by that is that you'll see as I get to the end of the song here that Nate did a whole jazz scat singing thing that is yet to be spoken of at all uh, in the analyzation of this song because in relationship to what we've been working on, we haven't gotten to that part of the song yet. Uh, but we are moving along and this week, yet part six of uh, On the Street Where You Live and all of these great stylized uh, elements that uh, Nate has been bringing into his singing we've been working on. So that's basically what we did this week. Release that lesson. Uh, takes me a while to do these lessons to really do them right. And what I'm always working on with all of you is even though we're here on the internet and I'm doing this as something that's, you know, pre-recorded, I am working very hard at working with the experience of being in the room with me. The same way I just talk to anybody uh, in the room when we're working on a lesson. So you can have that same experience right here uh, with the lessons. Just as if you were right here in the room with me, this is the same way I would be talking to you. I'm talking to you now. I talk to you in the lessons. I am always just working as if a student is sitting right next to me in a chair. And uh, so you have that same experience uh, via virtual reality here. So anyway, that's what's going on, and uh, I love it. And I love breaking down these songs and, and getting to know all of these various artists and to bring them to you so you can also bring these stylized ideas into your singing. And in the end, you're just going to do it your way, just like we all do. But by being exposed to these ideas and then you trying to do them your way, but you sounding like you sound when you do it, it's going to be completely different still. It's always going to be different. That is the incredible, incredible miracle about human voices. We all have a different voice. Millions, billions of people who have lived, moved on, or right on the planet right now. It's incredible to think that every one of us has a different sounding voice. And that's what makes you and every single person that ever sings a song unique. As we learn these stylized elements, that we can all take, but as each person takes it into them, it's going to be processed in a different way. It's going to sound a different way. You can be female, you can be male, you can be young, you can be old, you can have a very deep voice, you can have a very high tenor voice, a very high soprano voice, you can have a little girl's voice, a little boy's voice. It really doesn't matter. As you bring these elements in, your specialness at this point in time in your development is going to come through. And that's the beauty of it. So we're not copying something and we're all going to sound the same. Nothing like that at all. We're looking at this as if someone would look at a painting by a great artist, taking some of the ideas that that artist was doing, but ourselves as artists reprocessing it and doing it our way in the end. So, keep on moving along here and listening to these things. Bring this into your singing. It will improve you in so many different subtle ways. Now, on the musical tip of the week, I like tying things together. You know, the past few musical tips of the week over the, over, I don't know, maybe the last couple months or so have been related to each other. Now, last week I talked to you about 
working between two parts of your range instead of three, meaning going from your chest voice just up to your mix, bringing in uh, different types of coloration such as vibrato, bringing it in, bringing it out, singing louder, singing softer, and then the same thing between your mix up into your head voice, just working those two places. And the reason for that, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more and then add to it. The reason for that, of course, is if you can get comfortable right between these places and the switches, then when you can take any song and melody line, and when you run into the problems, these problems are always going to be in the same places. They're going to be, most of the time, shifting between two areas of your range. It, cr it creates pressure in your voice or even lack of pressure in your voice depending upon what part of your voice you're moving in and your ability to be able to deal with that comfortably is all about technique and singing and having better technique things are easier for you to do or not having such great technique and things are harder for you to do. Let me tell you something. I know a lot of professionals, I've worked with a lot of professional singers who have been singing for years no voice instruction till they came to me to speak of. Maybe a little something happened to them in high school and choir, but that was about it. And you get these great singers who now, as they're getting a little older, come to me and they're saying, hey, I'm losing my high end. What's going on? You know, uh, what am I doing wrong? Now they're interested. And I always tell everybody what they're doing wrong. What they're doing wrong is putting too much air pressure and force against something that is holding back the air pressure and it can only hold back the air pressure with so much force and then it blows open and it also gets weak and tired when you work on it too hard and send too much heft through the vocal cords. And so that becomes the problem and the study becomes learning how to go to these places where the pressure does build up in your voice and take some of that pressure away. The better, at you, the better you get at pulling that pressure away from the areas of your voice where that pressure is built up, the better your technique will be, the longer the life your voice will be both in a performance in an evening all the way up to your whole career and life because these little things that you're doing that wears you out and then you have to go rest and then come back and do it again these things build up over the years. You can get with it. You can get away with it when you're younger because you're so strong and everything heals itself faster. But really if you're doing something that's creating that problem or always have been doing something that's creating that problem what you've always been doing is taxing your voice and you're going to pay for it in later years in your voice. So great technique from day one will improve the quality of your voice from day one also save your voice also in the short run of things you're going to be able to sing an evening's performance no matter what age you are you're going to be able to sing an evening's performance and walk away and not be trashed if you're trashed at the end of a performance something's going on there that's tearing up your chords and if you're just realistic with yourself in the situation you'll face it and know that you're doing something that needs to be addressed needs to be worked on in a different way. Now, no doubt I could probably just stop right there and say the musical tip of the week was me explaining to you how you should get your technique together and not put so much air pressure through your chords. But I'm saying that all the time. And I want to keep saying it because new people are going to see this. And also, those of you that have heard me talk about this before, I want to keep putting it in here because I get it all the time from lesson to lesson as students come in, professional singers come in with the same old problems really. And they're what I just talked about. But for the musical tip of the week, let's tie on to last week's lesson about going oh, bringing the vibrato and so forth in. All right, we can, uh, hopefully you've been working on that. And again, if you don't have vibrato, come on over to the course that teaches vibrato and understand what's going on there. And I'll also say the same thing I said before about vibrato. Sometimes if you don't have vibrato it's because you have muscles that are fighting each other and these because these muscles are uh, fighting against each other that muscular fight stops the vibrato from happening. 
vibrato, this tremor that happens automatically with nerve energy, happens when everything is balanced correctly and the air pressure is coming through. So a good vibrato and good control and the ability to bring it in and out of your uh, voice as you're singing is a good indication that you have better control or lack of control depending upon how good or how much trouble that is uh, to execute. But what do I want to add that's new to this? Okay, besides doing that, for those of you that can, let's get into a couple of vocal tricks. Now, these are called embellishments, and there's lots of different things you can do. When you have multiple notes that happen on one, on one particular vowel sound or one word, uh, they're called melismas. And mel so melismas are things like, hey, 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 hey anything like that where you're sort of holding on a sustain and playing with the notes the way you hear the R&B singers do. So a fun thing to get into just to start to get that started is to work with upper and lower neighbors. I talk about it in the courses when I'm talking about licks and embellishments. But upper neighbors are simply your ability to go up a half a step or a whole step and down a half a step or a whole step away from the last note that you're working on. So if I go, oh, that is an upper neighbor. Oh, that's a lower neighbor. Went down, came back up. The important note is the note that you're holding on. You know, like, uh, oh, say, can you see? Oh, say, can you see? Bring it down. See, that's uh, the lower neighbor. The one that I did just before that, that's three notes down. Oh, say, can you see? Now, that's used a lot in R&B, but it's also used a lot in country. That's another uh, pattern or something that's just common. These are not big surprises. These are the things that you hear lots of singers pick up on because they hear other singers do it on recordings, and then they start to copy it. But I want to get into it, explain it to you, how it really works. So try adding an upper neighbor or a lower neighbor to the different vowels as you sing through your range, like this. Oh, 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 e, e, e. to get the feeling. And of course you can put that on any sustaining note to any melody line. Somewhere over the rainbow. There. I took a melody line and did a couple things with it. Again, I was talking about the upper neighbor. I don't want to confuse you. I also did a three note dissension. And same thing. Practice a three note dissensions with the vowels. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, e, a, a, anything like that. And, you know, again, work on different places in your range. As you're doing that, you're getting more flexibility and more comfort uh, in different parts of your range. And so, again, if I go, ooh, 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 lower neighbor, three note dissension. Easy little, very commonly used embellishments or licks or melismas. And those of you on YouTube can do this as well. And if you want to know more about what's happening around here, go over to the website totallyvocals.com, get your free membership, surf around, see the lessons. I'll tell you quickly the different things we have. We have beginning intermediate and advanced voice course, a course that teaches vibrato, a listening course that starts at a very simple point with just two notes and builds into incredible musical theory concepts 
uh, and it takes a while to progress through it. Uh, again, uh, besides a listening course, a harmony singing course, jazz scat singing course, hundreds of songs broken down with great vocalists singing it. Some of the singers are famous, some of them are not, but they're all great singers, both male and female singers and any style you can think of. And also fly on the wall lessons. Those fly on the wall lessons are just my cameras on during in my studio while I'm working with the student right here in the studio. And you can be like a fly on the wall and just watch the lesson go on and see what I do with the student and what their particular problem is or what it is that we're working on at the time. It's just like hanging out. So all of that and I'm sure more that I forgot. So come on over, totallyvocals.com. Uh, Merry Christmas again. Hope your uh, weekend is going well. Mm -hmm.